Today's episode is sponsored by my patrons on Patreon. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more like it, please consider making a pledge yourself. The link to my Patreon is down in the description below. Hey guys, what's up? My name is Bobby and I love movies. So today, we're going to be talking about Jared Leto's Joker. When I watched the first trailer for Suicide Squad, that last shot with the Joker gave me chills. It gave me a little hint of what I was sure would be a great performance, even if the film was terrible. Here is that shot in the trailer. I'm just gonna hurt you. Really, really bad. And here's that shot in the film. Oh, I'm not gonna kill you. I'm just gonna hurt you. Really, really bad. That's it. That's the, the scene. It's just a slightly different take from the trailer with some jump cuts and rainbow transitions added on top of it. But that's not really Jared Leto's fault. That's Warner Brothers and the editor's fault. I feel like I can't really judge Jared Leto's performance in this film because all we were given were the extreme moments from it. Moments that have given context and room to breathe could have been memorable moments. And by the way, Jared Leto agrees with me. This is what he said about Suicide Squad a couple days ago. Fuck him. I put up my thoughts about the movie two weeks ago, and then a couple days ago I was editing music video sins. Yes, I work for Cinema Sins, and we were doing an episode on the Skrillex and Rick Ross song Purple Lamborghini. It's a mixture of a music video slash promotional video for Suicide Squad that features a lot of Jared Leto's Joker in it. At first I thought he was a stand-in actor, like what Pink did for the Alice in Wonderland movie. Her music video had none of the actual actors and just people who vaguely looked like them. But no, it's really Jared Leto. I guess it was in part of his contract to appear in this music video to promote this god-awful film. When I first watched this music video, I really hated it. Like, I straight up despised it. But the more that I studied the footage, the more I realized something. The music video, although only 4 minutes and 22 seconds, contains the best footage of Jared Leto's Joker there has been so far. And yes, I am including the film. This video features long, moodily lit shots of the Clown Prince of Crime being the clown prince of crime. Of course, you have to mute the trash beat that's playing under it, but once you do that, I think you'll see what I mean. He isn't just freaking out and doing stupid faces the whole time. He's living in the skin of the character. He looks genuinely frightening in this little cinematic sequence towards the end of the music video. Plus, he is lit and shot like a character in a movie, not a cartoon. His makeup, tattoos, and metal teeth actually blend in with this world. His suit doesn't seem so out of place and his hair isn't neon. Everything is a little more toned down and believable. Now, don't get me wrong, there are some parts of this music video where they do the same thing as they did in the film. They jump cut around to shots of him making really stupid faces that are only there to be like, ooh, he's so crazy. But it's a Skrillex music video. If that performance belongs anywhere, it's here, not a major motion picture. But again, Again, I don't really think we can judge Jared Leto for that. I really do think there was a great performance captured on set, and that performance was cut to pieces until it was unrecognizable. If you take any great performance, let's say, I don't know, Heath Ledger's Joker and cut it the way they did, it can look pretty silly. Like this. Ah. Hi. Chaos. You know, I don't want there to be any hard feelings between us, Harvey. I wouldn't know what to do with one if I caught it. Look what I did. This city was a few drums of gas. Well, then everyone loses their minds. See what I mean? Even a great performance like that, when cut up, feels gimmicky and terrible. So far, I have not seen one single bad performance from Jared Leto. He has an incredible Joker inside of him that needs to be given room to come alive. I think it would be so cool to see a moody, grungy Joker movie directed by Dan Gilroy. Now, Dan Gilroy directed Nightcrawler, which was my favorite film of 2014. Nightcrawler is a dark character study following the story of a sociopath trying to move up in the world by whatever means necessary. It is thrilling, funny, haunting, beautifully shot, and terrifically directed. And yes, of course, I'd rather see original films like Swiss Army Man or Nice Guys over superhero movies, but if it's between this idea and Thor Ragnarok, I'm gonna go with this one.
Okay, guys, I guess that's it. Thank you so much for checking this video out. You can hit me up on Twitter at DBobbyBurns and Instagram at BobbyBurnsOfficial. My Patreon is down in the description below. And if you would like to send me something, my PO box is also in the description and right here on the screen. Again, thank you for checking this video out. I had a lot of fun making it. I really hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you later, guys. Peace out. Shh.